So this is going to be a bit more serious because I, I've, I've constantly talked about a civil war, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if that's the right thing to call it, but there is some kind of conflict brooding or it just feels like things are kind of falling apart. And now we have this story, once again, an escalation. And, and tr this, it's not even the only story. I've got a couple stories that we're going to talk about. Two arrested and social media shut down as 400 strong Christian mob attacks Muslim shops in Sri Lankan town hit by Easter bomb. Two people have been arrested in Sri Lanka after Christians attacked Muslim shops. Residents say the mostly Catholic mob stoned and vandalized Muslim-owned businesses in the seaside town of Nagambo, where a suicide bombing targeted a Catholic church last month. So what happened in Sri Lanka last month? Nightmarish. The craziest thing to me is the media doesn't talk about it. There's, there's this weird obsession that really, really pisses me off where you get all these left-wing media outlets saying, like, YouTube is this great radicalizer. Meanwhile you, meanwhile, you actually have religious conflict going on, and they don't cover this stuff. Like, of course they cover it. Of course the story's popped up. But what does CNN spend their time talking about? Paul Joseph Watson and Alex Jones. Are you kidding me? Look at this. This story is from uh, yesterday. Yester yesterday morning. You mean to tell me that this story comes out and CNN's going to spend time talking about Alex Jones. Alex Jones got banned from Instagram. A mob of 400 Christians has attacked a bunch of Muslims following, dude. <laughs> but you, you know what? Yeah, CNN, you know what's important, don't you? Yeah, the guy on YouTube who makes snarky videos about architecture and memes. I get it. Paul Joseph Watson's got political opinions that people don't like. It's not just architecture and memes. The point is, why is it that CNN thinks anyone should care about this? When you have stories like this, excuse me, the weekend clashes were said to involve majority ethnic Sinhalese and Muslims, but a cur curfew put in place by security forces was lifted on Monday. One Muslim resident of Porutota village near Nagumbo said the attackers burnt a three-wheeler taxi and a motorbike. This isn't the only story, okay? I got a bunch. Christian Muslim clashes rock, e rock Easter attacks town in Sri Lanka. This is from France 24. This keeps happening. Why? A bunch of guys carried out a bunch of suicide attacks on a bunch of buildings. And now there's religious tension. Now, both groups, Christian and Muslim, are religious minorities. It's mostly, mostly Buddhist. But uh, I think this is... Okay, so, so... And there's still more. So this is from today. Sri Lanka expels 200 Islamic clerics after Easter attacks. They say that they've expelled 600 foreign nationals, including around... Uh, let's make this bigger. 200 Islamic clerics since the Easter bombings blamed on a local jihadi group, a minister told AFP Sunday. Uh, Home Affairs Minister Vajira Abe Wardina said the clerics had entered the country legally, but amid a security crackdown after the attacks were found to have overstayed their visas, for which fines were imposed and they were expelled from the island. Now, there, there, there's more I want to get to, but I want to highlight this story. And I'm going to start with a tweet from Dave Rubin. Dave says, this video of brainwashed children learning to hate and murder out of Gaza is absolutely chilling. Oh, wait, it's not Gaza, it's Philadelphia. And Dave responds with, this media, bla the, the media, this media blackout on this is staggering. Where is BuzzFeed, who did their edgy piece on Chris Pratt's anti-gay church? Where's CNN, New York Times, and others? Where are the blue check journalists who went after the Covington kids? One type of fake news is what they ignore. And maybe, uh, let's refresh. Oh, okay, so that's, that's where he ends. Here's the thing. There's actually something happening, okay? There is extremism. There is, there is real radicalization. But for some reason, BuzzFeed is obsessed with YouTube. They're obsessed with my channel. They're obsessed with, you know, uh, CNN called Paul Joseph Watson an extremist. This is the kind of insane trash garbage that you can, you can come to expect from American journalism because they don't like you. They do not like you. Do you think any of these people got into the job of journalism because they wanted to sit on TV complaining about a YouTuber? No, of course not. They wanted to go on an adventure. They wanted to go to conflict zones. They wanted to protect democracy. And what are they doing? Alex Jones said something about aliens. Okay, I'll tell you what. Here's a story. And it's funny because it's the Daily Mail. It's a, I, I've got the Daily Mail, which is considered uh, right-leaning. I've got France 24, an international outlet. I've got this from the Daily Mirror, which is also uh, sourcing uh, AFP foreign outlets. And then we have the Daily Wire. Why is it that when I go to left-wing news outlets, they're talking about who nonsense? Like, listen, 
Of course, everybody's talking about Game of Thrones. Of course, we're talking about, you know, cultural issues. The, the, the queen or the duchess or whatever is going to have a baby. But this story has actually been in the news for about a week or so. Okay, I live in the Philly area. So, so you know, this is something that's actually happening. You have, let me just read some of it. The National Muslim American Society says it is investigating a disturbing video that surfaced online last week showing a handful of children at a Philadelphia Islamic Center performing a song about decapitating their enemies and martyrs sacrificing their lives to reclaim Jerusalem. The group is calling the video a mistake and an oversight. Uh, What? The video was the mistake? What about the fact that these kids were singing this song and doing this thing? The Philadelphia Inquirer reports the Muslim American Society believes the Uma Day performances at the Muslim American Society Islamic Center in North Philadelphia were not properly vetted and that a disturbing song was an unintended mistake and an oversight. <laughs> was it? The Daily Wire's Ryan Saavedra reported on the video late last week, which featured children dancing in unison and singing that they would remove the heads for Allah. So, so here's the point I'm trying to make with this video, right? It's, it's you know, of course I'm going to get into a lot of why I just don't like the media and this insanity. But we, we, we really are seeing something that's kind of uh, international religious tension escalation. It's not just about the culture war. It's about, you know, what happens in New Zealand is culturally but also religiously motivated. What happened in California was religiously motivated. And again, culture plays a role in this. Apparently, they said, I don't, I don't know where they're at with confirmation on this, but what happened in Sri Lanka was retaliation for New Zealand. Then we see what happens in California, where he says he's inspired by this. Then we see this story in Philadelphia where you have these kids singing and saying they will remove the heads for Allah. This is all escalation. And maybe, maybe it's because we have such a direct connection, you know, in communication. We're seeing these things and where, you know, in the past, we probably wouldn't have even heard about a story like this. But now we're hearing about all of them rapidly. And the other thing is, when it comes to what's happening in Sri Lanka, that action they took was retaliation for what happened in in, uh, New Zealand. And now we're seeing a mob of 400 Christians attacking Muslim shops. That's crazy. Let's read, let's, let's check in. So we've got photos here. And uh, this is the same photo that I showed from the AFP. A gem seller said around 400 people rampaged in the streets, bombarded his shop with missiles, and some took precious stones kept in showcases. And I want to stress when they're doing news stories and talking about missiles, they're not talking about like rockets. They're talking about just people, people throwing random objects. For, now for real, like people ask me that. He said the violence started as a drunken private brawl, but refused to name parties involved. The Sri Lankan government also blocked some social media sites overnight, including Facebook and WhatsApp, in order to control the situation. The information department director, Nalaka Kaluwewa, said the block was lifted early on Monday. The violence comes as state schools in Sri Lanka resumed classes today amid tight security after the Easter Sunday bombings. Many anxious parents kept their children at home over fears, excuse me, of more attacks by Islamic militants, leaving some classrooms virtually empty. Soldiers conducted security sweeps through the schools. We get it. I don't want to read too much into this. Like, we understand what's happening. And people are going to draw, they're going to draw lines. They're going to take, they're going to choose sides. And the weirdest thing to me is how the media completely ignores, they ignore, you know, certain, certain stories. So for instance, if you, if you look at the amount of coverage that Sri Lanka got, And there's going to be a lot of speculation as to why this was. The media didn't really talk about it all that much. They did, right? Obviously, it was a big breaking story. It was on every news channel. And then like a day later, it was gone. New Zealand gets repeated over and over and over again. Why? I think it's because the people who work in media hate you. Not all of them, but enough. They hate you. They don't like you. They didn't want to do this job. And so they're after you specifically. When you have a story about a uh, a Philadelphia uh, Muslim society... And you've got these kids singing a song, let's, uh, and they just call it a mistake. But where's, where's CNN's coverage of this? Fox News is covering it. Of course they are. Conservatives are talking about it. Why don't they talk about it on any other network? Maybe there would be more unity in this country if CNN said this is probably more important than complaining about Paul Joseph Watson. I kid you not. You get a segment yesterday where they're sitting there calling Paul Joseph Watson the extremist when you quite literally for the past week have a Muslim Islamic center with kids talking about removing the heads of their enemies in the name of their Lord. You actually have Christians forming a mob and, des- and, and destroying a bunch of Muslim shops in Sri Lanka. And what do we get? We get uh, Alex Jones, Infowars. We get old news. We get repeated news. 
because they just don't like you. They talk about stupid American cultural issues that affect almost no one, and they ignore the fact that something is actually happening. It's, it's, it's multifaceted. I think the media is trash. I think we're seeing uh, complete tribalism. People have their blinders on, and this is what you're going to get. You're going to get retaliation after retaliation, and you're going to get a media that doesn't care about it. They're going to ignore it. So not only are we... So, so here's the thing. This escalation in religious violence should be worrying to everybody. And we should do what we can to make sure it doesn't continue. Stop the escalation. At the same time, instead of saying something like that, you'll turn on CNN or, or go to BuzzFeed and they'll be telling you, no, it's getting worse and you should do more to make it worse. They'll tell you that, you know, so we have two fronts, the cultural and the religious. And the media seems to be doing every, everything, it's, everything it can to a certain degree. And not all media, I'm just saying there's certain websites, there's certain channels that are fanning the flames of cultural tensions while ignoring the growing tensions between these religious groups and what's happening in, in, in the world. With Listen, maybe, maybe people think Sri Lanka is so foreign to us, it doesn't matter. But New Zealand was something that was more akin to our culture, right? It's the Commonwealth. But it's all interlinked. This was in response to New Zealand. California was in response to, to New Zealand. And th there will be more. And we will see more stories about extremism. But I doubt you're going to see mainstream left-wing media getting in line and saying these are the things that matter. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. It's kind of, this video is kind of all over the place, but the point I was trying to make is just the, we're, we're seeing actual things happening in this world that are kind of worrisome. And instead of, of people being unified about what's the most important thing, de-escalation, the media actually tries to escalate things. Like, I kid you not, running a segment calling Paul Joseph Watson an extremist instead of talking about this. It blows my mind. I'll see you, I'll see you later today at 1 p.m.